so hello students uh, welcome to the class um, so in the last class uh, we started with the problems on bars we had done a problem on um, stepped bar so in today's class we'll do one more problem on uh, bar so we'll be following the same steps which we followed um, for the problem which we did in the last class all the problems of fpa will be following the same steps okay So in today's class, we'll solve this problem. Uh, we'll determine uh, what are the what is the displacement stresses and support reactions for this problem. So problem is this one: uh, one-dimensional bar is uh, subjected to axial loading, as shown here. Taking it as a two-bar element. So in the question, it is mentioned you have to assume this as a two-bar element. We can even solve this by assuming one-bar one-bar element, two-bar, three-bar, or whatever. Okay. If you go on increasing the number of elements, only problem will be your uh, stiffness matrix will be larger. So determine nodal displacement, element stresses. You have to determine the displacements at each node. Uh, what are the stresses in each element and support reactions? Along with the stresses, we will even uh, find out what are the element strains as well. So this is the problem given to you. Uh, the length of a bar is 1000 mm, one end of the bar is fixed and the other end a load of 10 kN is applied and the cross section area of the bar is 10 mm square and the Young's modulus is given by E equal to 200 gigapascal. and here you can see a direction of X is indicated so what does this what does this mean is so while once you divide this into number of elements while giving the known numbers you have to give it from right to left so in the previous class the direction was to the right direction of x was to the right okay so here the direction is to the left it means this force so whatever uh, the forces are there which are to the left are considered as positive to the right are considered as negative so in the previous case your direction of x was to the right so whatever the direction whatever the force direction was to the right was positive to the left was negative so in this case it is opposite to that so we have to consider this as compressive force because the direction of x is to the left so you have to assume this as it's clearly given in the question you have to take two bar elements so this bar is assumed as a two bar element element number one element number two with nodes one two and three so length of the first element if you assume this as a two, uh, two elements uh, this bar is two elements so length of first element will be 500 mm and length of second element will be 500 mm and you indicate the element numbers e1 and encircle it e1 e2 indicate the uh, nodal displacements q1 q2 and q3 don't worry about the direction this is just a notation and uh, at node 1 there is a force of 10 kN is applied and uh, at node 3 it is fixed so it means there is a reaction at node so this is your first step, FE model. What is the next step? Uh, we need to determine what are the element stiffness matrix for each element. So we have two elements. We need to determine what is the element stiffness matrix for first element and what is the element stiffness matrix for second element. So we know uh, the stiffness matrix for bar element is given by E A L 1 minus 1 minus 1 1. So for the first element, it is E1, A1 divided by L1 and for the second element it is E2, A2 upon L2. Then you can see here for the first element substitute all the values of uh, E, A and L in the stiffness matrix find out what is K1 and K2. Now since the length of the element and the material for first element and as well as for the second element it is completely same so both K1 and K2 will be same and do indicate the known numbers for each element okay so known numbers for the first element are 1 and 2 and known numbers for the second element are 2 and 3 so what does this element indicate this is k11 so this is k21 this is k12 and this is k22 similarly this is for the second element this is k22 this is k32 this is k23 and this is k33 okay so simplify this is your k1 and this is your k2 
So once the element stiffness matrix is done, now we need to assemble each element stiffness matrix to obtain the global stiffness matrix. The assembly of element stiffness matrix is nothing but your global stiffness matrix. To obtain that, k equal to k1 plus k2. So how will you add it? So you have divided the bar into two elements. So what should be the size of the global stiffness matrix? So the size of the global stiffness matrix will be 3 cross 3. So number of nodes for this uh, are, there are two elements. How many number of nodes are there? Three nodes are there. So it means the size of the global uh, stiffness matrix will be 3 cross 3. And number of degrees of freedom per node is 1 because your bar will be having only displacement in one direction. So each node will be having only single degree of freedom. So you have assumed three nodes. So your global stiffness matrix size will be 3 cross 3. And do mention here when you write the global stiffness matrix, the row numbers for this is this belongs to the first node, second, third. Okay. Now how will you add it? So this is your k11 element. Write that k11 element here. Next, k21. So k21 here minus 4. This is the common one. 10 raised to 3 is common. You have to write it here. So here uh, minus 4 k12, then k22 4 which is written here. Then with respect to second element also there is k22 okay, which is also 4. So you have to add this term and this term. That is how your stiffness matrix are added. The common elements will be added from both the stiffness matrices. Next remaining terms are written k3, k32 minus 4, then k23 minus 4, k33 4 and the remaining terms will be 0. Remaining terms will be 0 and this is your global load vector. So since there is, there is only uh, point loads over the bar, there is no distributed load, your uh, global force vector will be F1, F2 and F3. So what is the what are the forces given to you? What are the forces applied? So there is a force only at node 1. There are no forces at node 2 and node 3. It will be 0. And here at node 1, the load is minus 10,000 Newton. Minus 10,000 Newton. Why minus Newton? Minus because direction of X is to the left, but the direction of force is to the right. That's why it is minus and this is your global displacement vector okay your displacements at node 1 node 2 and node 3 so once you are uh, done with the uh, global stiffness matrix you have to write the equilibrium equation that is equilibrium equation is given by kq equal to f so these equations these k q and f are written here okay k q f are written here next once you are done with uh, equilibrium equation. Next, you need to determine the unknown displacements. How do you determine the unknown displacements? By applying the boundary conditions. Okay. So there are two ways I have told you already. One is elim elimination approach, other is penalty approach. So we are using elimination approach. So here, uh, what are the boundary conditions given to you? So node 3 is fixed, right? Node 3 is fixed. So since node 3 is fixed, that is your displacement Q3 will be 0. If your displacement Q3 is 0, you have to eliminate third row and third column. Third column and third row you have to eliminate. And write the given terms. Write the given terms here. So 10 raised to 3, 4 minus 4, minus 4, 8, Q1, Q2, minus 10,000 and 0. So you have these two equations. Simplify these two equations. So you have two equations here. 10 raised to 3, 4 Q1, minus 4 Q2, equal to minus 10,000. You have your first equation. 10 raised to 3 minus 4 q1 8 q2 equal to 0. You solve these two equations, you will get the displacement at first node as a displacement at this node as minus 5 mm, displacement at this location as minus 2.5. So this is your overall displacement, global displacement matrix, which is written here. Minus 5 displacement at node 1, minus 5 displacement at node 2, minus 2.5 displacement at node 3, 0. Okay, so this is how you determine the unknown uh, field variables at node. Now using these unknown field variables which you have determined, you will find out what are the elements, strains and stresses and support reactions. So we will find out next the strains, element strains and stresses. So how will you find element strains and stresses? So in the previous class we have derived these equations for element strain and for element stresses. So element strain is given by 1 upon Le minus 1, 1, so Q of i and Q of i plus 1. What this means Qi and Qi i plus 1? 
So it depends on the element. If your first element it has known numbers one and two, so this this will be Q1 and this will be Q2. If it is if you are finding it for the second element, this will be uh, Q2 and this will be Q3. Okay. So substitute the values and find out the element strings. So for the first element, this is Q1 and Q2. The known numbers are Q1 and Q2. You have determined uh, there are known displacements. So substitute those displacements and find out the string. So you will get strain for the first element as 0 0.005. And similarly, you find out what is the uh, stress in the first element. Sigma 1 equal to E1 L1 minus 1 1 Q1 Q2. Same equations. You have to just multiply the Young's modulus to this strain. So you will get the stress as sigma 1 as 1000 mega Pascal. Okay. Since both are elements are same, you will get the strains and the stresses for the second element also same. You will get the same. But here, make sure when you are writing here, so here the nodes related to second element are 2 and 3, 2 and 3. Okay. But the answers you will get same. Okay. The answers which you obtain for uh, second element, the strain and uh, stress are same as that of element 1. So, epsilon 2 equal to 0 0.005 and sigma 2 equal to 1000 mega pascal. Next, the last step, you need to find out what are the reaction forces at supports. So in order to find out reactions, so what is the equation? What is the condition? Your reaction forces and your forces applied sum must be always zero. Okay. So in order to find out the reaction forces, so this is the expression. So R equal to KQ minus F. So you know what is K, you know what is Q, you know what is F. Substitute that and find out what is your reaction forces. So we know reaction forces, uh, the support is there only at, the support is there only at which node? Only third node. So by default, there are no reaction forces at node 1 and 2. So reaction forces will be Zero. You need to just solve the third equation and find out what is your reaction force at third node. Okay, reaction force at third node. That is 10 raised to 3. Okay, 0 into minus 5, minus 4 into minus 2.5, then 4 into 0, so minus 0. So when you simplify that, your third equation you will get R3 as 10 kilo Newton. So you can see your applied forces minus 10 kilo Newton, the reaction forces. 10 kN. So, sum of forces that is sum of reaction forces and uh, applied forces that is plus 10 and minus 10 is 0. So, it means your system is in equilibrium. If your system is not in equilibrium, you are unable, to, you cannot solve this problem. The system must be in equilibrium. So, this completes the problem. So, in the next class, we will solve few more problems on Bars. Thank you.